Everything within me is drained. After the accident, my life couldn't possibly return to the joyous one that had previously been. No, there's no more laughter. No smiles. In place of the cheer I once radiated was fear and shock and confusion. I have no clue who I even am anymore. On our way to a birthday party, one I bugged my parents to attend, there was a fearsome storm underway. I remember looking out the backseat window, mesmerized by the beauty of the pelting rain outside. I've always found comfort in the aura that rain evoked. It was so peaceful, so subtle. And yet, that particular day, it caused something horrifying to happen. The rain-stricken street gave lethal leverage to the semi coming towards us on that winding road. It seemed like it was happening in slow motion. One minute, Dad was turning, attempting to void the head-on collision. The next, his head was bouncing off the steering wheel, blood gushing out of the gash that the impact created. When I looked over at my mother, the survivor of a tragic car accident that claimed her legs as a child, she glanced back at me, her arm guarding me from the shards of glass that escaped the shattered windshield. I must have passed out, my body reacting to the shock of the brutal crash, because when I opened my eyes, both of my parents were gone. I was left, seatbelt still attached in the car, dangling upside down. Hastily, I unbuckled the seatbelt, wincing in pain as I realized my right arm was impaled by a large piece of metal. Still, I pressed on, finally escaping the seatbelt, which in turn caused me to land on the roof of the car. Though my knees protested in pain, shards of the broken windshield cutting away at them ruthlessly, I ignored it, calling out for my mother and father. The only audible sound was the sound of the rain viciously pounding away above my head, muting my attempts to call for my parents. So I crawled out of the back window, random pieces of metal and glass making their presence known as I did so. Once I was out of the metal tomb, I looked around the forested landscape, identifying the road that we somersaulted from and the demolished railing fifty feet above the crash. Mom! Dad! I yelled, clutching my damaged arm as I walked around towards the other side of the car. There, atop the mud-smothered grass, was my mother and my father. My eyes immediately widened once I realized what was happening. Once I saw my mother's blood-covered face. She was slouched over my dad, her head swaying side to side viciously as she appeared to be eating his legs. I covered my mouth, attempting to hold back the urge to vomit as she lifted her head away from my father's corpse. Honey, she called, holding up her blood-soaked hand. I shook my head, covering my ears as shock began to eat away at my sanity. This, this isn't what it looks like, baby. Your father, he wanted me to do this. He was dying, sweetheart. He told me to do what I had to to get us out of here she said, nodding her head. I fell to the ground, staring at my father's wide-opened eyes as he laid a few inches ahead of my feet. The rain pelted down on his corpse, quickly washing away the blood on his face and crimson rivulets to the tall grass beyond. Why? I asked, burning a hole in my mother's eyes. She stood up. She stood up? We're different, baby. Your father and I... We just wanted you to have a normal life. You weren't supposed to see this, she said, walking towards me. I panicked, backing away from her, forgetting the fact that my right arm was badly mangled. Don't be scared, Ariel. Come here, she said, pulling me up from the sunken ground. She looked over me, observing my shredded legs and my wounded arm. Let me get this out of you, she said, swiftly pulling the metal shard out of my arm. I screamed before glancing down at the unidentifiable limb that was once my arm. 
My blood seemed to gush from the gaping wound, and not even the rain poured down fast enough to cleanse it all away. His arm, my mother said, pulling me down to my father's limp body. I shook my head, yelling for help. Stop it, Ariel. You... you have to do this. You're gonna bleed out, baby. Your father would want you to do this, she said, rubbing my back. My vision began to blur as my heart slowed. Though I was afraid and disgusted and confused, I lowered my lips to my father's corpse, and I ate, savoring each bite as if it were some sort of delicacy. I couldn't stop once I started until it was gone. My mother watched, caressing my rain-soaked hair, as I ate my father's arm. My father's arm. Once I lifted my head, wiping away the crimson evidence of my feast, I looked down at my own right arm. It was intact again, unmarred and perfectly normal. I have a lot to tell you, Ariel, my mother said, staring deeply within my eyes. I sat there, gazing at my father as he began to shake. He seemed to be changing. His skin, once a vibrant beige, was now graying. His hair, once healthy and shiny, sloughed away from his head in clumps. His face, once chiseled handsomely, bloated to a point of unrecognizability. His teeth were now sharpened knives protruding from his closed mouth like a piranha. See, we aren't like everyone else, Ariel. You may not remember, but you've done this before. How else could you have gotten legs? my mother said, wrapping her arm around my shoulder. As the storm subsided, I stared down at what I once called my father. Where his legs once resided rested a growing mass. After some time, once its growth concluded, I recognized what the mass had become. A tail. I didn't lose my legs in a car accident, Ariel. Your father had to remove my tail, leaving me the way you're used to seeing me because... At the time, I just couldn't stomach doing what he did to get legs. But I also didn't want to go back home, sweetie. We weren't built for this lifestyle. We have to do things. And I mean bad things. To blend in here. Your father and I chose to leave the colony behind long ago so that you could experience life at its fullest potential. Among the walking she said. Though her confession caused my knees to buckle and my head to ache in disbelief, in the background I could make out the approaching ambulance in the distance. The sirens resonated through the forest, grabbing my attention and shattering all cloudiness from my thoughts. Sirens.